Okay, in today's video, we're going to show you how to use Vesta to plot two different crystal structures on the same plot. I've had a lot of people ask me, how do you do this? And so for today's example, we're going to try and recreate a figure from this paper uh, from MIT where they try and look at the way that graphene can form on different metal substrates. And in particular, it's this figure that we're going to try and recreate. So just the inset of this figure where you can see that it's the copper phase down here and the graphene phase up here. That's the copper 111 surface and we'd like to put graphene on there at different distances d. So can you do this in Vesta? And if so, how do you go about it? So what we're going to try and create is something like this. You can see that this is essentially the same figure here. They've color coded their atoms here, which we could do later in Illustrator. But this is essentially what you've got. You've got the different stacking layers of the FCC. It goes A, B, C, A, just like they have here. They call them 1, 2, 3, 4, but that's A, B, C, A stacking because it's FCC. And then you've got the, the graphite layer here. So how do you get started to do this? Um, let's start over. We'll do a brand new fresh one. So when you do this, actually I'm going to close this one. We won't save that. To do this, we're going to start by um, create, bringing in the copper structure first. Let's start with bringing copper in. So we're going to open that sieve file. So I have those saved. Um, here's FCC copper. So this is just regular old copper. If you look at its structure, I haven't done anything to this yet. It's just the basic unit cell for copper that one would expect to see. Okay. Now the thing to notice is that here in edit data of Vesta, you can bring in different phases. There's different options here, right? This is right now phase one, which is copper, but we're free to bring in another phase. So I'm going to hit import. And now I'm going to bring in graphite. Um, I happen to have graphite here, a sieve card for it. So I'm going to bring it in. And automatically now we have two different phases, right? So both of these exist. If I hit apply and I cl close this window, you see that it's just plotted them directly on top of each other, even though one's cubic and one is hexagonal. So that's not ideal. That's not the arrangement that we want. So to show the arrangement that we want, let's start by looking at copper. So we're going to go to boundary. And let's try and see the 111 surface. So to do that, I'm just going to give ourselves lots of different unit cells to work with. I'm going to go from negative 3 to 3 in all these different directions and hit apply. It's going to be really big. Um, then I'm going to draw the 111 plane. So I'm going to come over here to lattice planes. I'm going to do a new plane. And I'm just going to make the 1, 1, 1. And I'm going to make sure that D is set to 1. By default, the D value isn't set to 1, and I wish it was. It makes more sense to set it to 1, so make sure you do that. And sure enough, in pink, now you see that there is our 111 plane. So if I rotate this thing, I can get it so that is basically flat. Okay, so now we could start cutting away some of the items. If I hit S or come over here to click that, that's my select tool, I could go ahead and start deleting away you know, all of these copper atoms up here, for example. There's lots of them, so it's going to take a second. And sure enough, you could go by deleting them. But before we do that, you'll notice that we have a problem. The graphite is not oriented the way we want it to. We wanted the graphite layers, there's our graphite layers. We wanted those to be sort of stacking on top of the 1-1 surface, and they're not, right? If we look at our 1-1 surface, they are intersecting it. So we have to fix that. We want it to look like this, where they're <clears throat> playing with it. So to fix that, we're going to have to go back over here to our edit, edit data, and now we're going to go to our phase data. And we're going to have to orient the copper and the graphite phase to one another. So the easiest way to do that, since the planes in the graphite are along that 0, 0, 1 direction, is going to be to select that. So we're going to orient Let's click on graphite. That's going to be this layer. We can align orientation of this layer with respect to um, layer number one. Okay. We can orient it relative to the 1, 1, 1 direction. Or we can orient it to the 1, 1, 1 plane. So let's do that. Okay. So we want the 0, 0, 1. Actually, we want the like that. We want the 0, 0, 1 oriented to it. Okay, see what that did there? We oriented the 0, 0, 1 direction of graphite. That's this vertical direction. We wanted that oriented to the 1, 1, 1 plane. 
which is what we have here in copper. Now the problem you see is that the distance in this image, um, D is tunable and they can change where it's located at. But right now you see the R is actually located below this layer or up here. Um, that's not what we're looking for. We like to tune it. So over here, the position and orientation can be tuned separately. So we're going to tune. It says place the XYZ of this layer at XYZ of layer something. So let's take this and try. Let's try moving it. 0.2 of a unit cell. All right, let's move 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Actually, we can just do 0, 0, 0.2, I think. So we're just going to move it in the Z direction. So we shifted it the wrong way, so let's go the other direction, negative 0.2. And you could, obviously this is a fraction of the C lattice parameter. So if we wanted to know the exact D separation, it would just be 0.2 multiplied by that C axis. But now you can see that it's shifted up in the correct direction. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take a look at this and see how we're doing. So I'm going to add some unit cells for our graphite. We only want to see, so I can do that by changing here my phase from the graphite phase to carbon phase, right? Sorry, from the copper phase to the graphite phase. And we're going to change in our x and y directions. We're going to give ourselves more unit cells. So let's again do like negative 3 to 3, negative 3 to 3. That should be plenty. Yeah, so there's lots of carbons there. So now let's just go ahead and delete some atoms. I'm going to rotate this thing a little bit. So you can see that nice FCC stacking. Then I'm going to click S or come over here and click this select tool. And I'm just going to delete out all of these atoms that we don't need because they're cluttering up our graph. Okay, hit delete on those. These ones I have to come down for. Hit delete on those. We're going to rotate this one. We're going to translate it up, excuse me. And now we want one, two, three, four of these, and I'm going to delete everything below it. So I will delete all of those. Make sure you get them all. Okay, um, now it's looking pretty good. So it depends on how, how large you want this. I'm just going to cut mine off right here and right here over there. I'm going to turn off the pink 111 plane by coming over here to edit and lattice planes and just hitting delete. I'm going to click that plane that we had created before and just delete it. So now that's gone. Now there's these old unit cells. Let's get rid of those by going over here to properties and under unit cell line. Let's just not show the unit cells. So now we're looking pretty good. Let's zoom in a little bit. Translate this down a hair. And sure enough, we're getting pretty close. Let's rotate it so it looks flat. Okay, and sure enough, we have recreated the image from the paper. Now, if you want to change the separation distance D between the FCC layer and the graphite, you can do that. Like, they have this tunable. Again, to do that, you would come over here. You'd go to edit your data, and in your phase, we're just going to change the amount that we're translating this layer relative to the other. Now, if I hit go here, I'm not sure if that's going to reset all the deleted atoms, but we can give it a shot. So let's do a third, uh, 0.3 of a unit cell. Yeah, so that recreated all those atoms. So we're going to have to delete those out again. But that's how you would move it up. You can see that it's now shifted a little bit further up. So that is how you plot multiple unit cells in Vesta. The key thing that you can add as many as you want, and you can both move them in XYZ distance from one another, as well as orient them directions to different planes and vice versa. Okay, hope that was helpful.